Hi, Andres. Good morning, Anna, and thank you for having me. Now we stand here today again. It's report time, and it's the first quarter since we had the Captain Markets Day in September. How would you put the, your words around the highlights this quarter? The quarter, from a financial perspective, was a typical third quarter and is not one of the strongest quarters of the year. However, there were some very important events. As you remember from our Capital Markets Day, we have three pillars. We have operational excellence driven through technology, we have commercial focus on the clients, and we have de-risking through a capital light business model. And this quarter had evidence of all three areas. Number one, on technology, we closed on the acquisition of eCollect as well as Ophelos. We announced those in the Capital Markets Day. We actually closed on the transactions. We're well on to uh, integrating uh, Ophelos. And we've already signed up our first few clients on eCollect, which is very important invoice services um, product for our middle and northern European markets. So already, we're including technology into our offering as well as our operations. On the commercial side, we have had an amazing year. We've already exceeded 1.1 billion SEC in new annual contract value of client signings. That was our budget for the full year. We reached it during the third quarter, and it compares very favorably to last year, which was a little bit under 700, about 690. We also had some very big commercial wins. We got a large contract from Building Center in Spain. We expanded our business with Virgin Money in the UK, and we also acquired a very, or were awarded a very large contract with a hospital in Norway whose name I cannot uh, pronounce. As a result of that, not surprising, income or revenue from our servicing business is up 10% year on year. And then finally, on the de-risking side, despite the fact that we have lowered our investments, our income from investing is still up 4 or 5% year on year. So we're making progress, small steps in some cases, very important steps in other cases, across all three pillars on it. Great. And uh, two of the top priorities that we presented in the CMD was a leverage uh, ratio and also the cost base. How are we doing on those areas? Well, our cost program, uh, as we previously communicated, is very important to our near-term profitability and providing a foundation for long-term profitability. We have already implemented about 365 million of reductions. Those are run rate reductions that are going to be start to show up from now going forward. And we as we already communicated in the CMD, we are very confident that we're going to exceed meaningfully the prior target of 800 million SEC, and that will come into our numbers in the next 12 to 18 months. On the leverage ratio, this quarter, we're down from 4.6 to 4.4. That's a very small step, the beginning of what we believe to be a trajectory that will bring us down to 3.5 or below in the next two to three years. And it's a small step, and it's moving in the right direction. Ultimately. Every, and I want to be very clear about this, our near-term priority is to lower costs as well as to lower leverage. And we're going to dedicate all our operating cash flow plus cash flow for many tactical measures, exiting markets, sale of backbook, et cetera, to reducing leverage and reducing our financial risk. The environment calls for it and we have to do it. So we have previously communicated that 2023 is a bit of a transitory year for us. Uh, we have a pretty tough backdrop. It's both macroeconomic and geopolitical challenges. How does this affect us? Well, it, it affects all of us, as well as it makes what we're doing that much more critical. So the environment is quite challenging. In fact, on the geopolitical side, we're seeing levels of confrontation and violence that many of us have never seen before. So we've already seen, we've already bore witness to the Russia-Ukraine situation for well over a year. And then more recently, the violence in the Middle East. All of this is quite concerning. It impacts our people. And what we have to do is fall back on our values. And I think I want to be very clear in that um, it is completely against Intram's values. And our 10,000, I'm certain that all 10,000 of our employees agree with this, that the targeting of any individual based on race, sex, ethnicity, religion, is absolutely against our values and is something that is uh, despicable. But we are witnessing some of that in the world and we have to actually deal with that. So it does impact people and we need to be mindful of that. On the economic front, the numbers are quite dire on it. Um, we put out our consumer payment report, at least some excerpts in the last few weeks. We're going to publish it in a couple of weeks fully. The numbers are the worst numbers since we started the survey. 74% of European consumers are either breaking even or in a deficit on a monthly basis when they compare their income to their costs. More than 50% have one month of savings or less to fall back on. 20% have no savings. These numbers are quite dire. 
What's happening as a result is 40 to 50% of them are resorting to taking on new credit to fill the deficit, just further exacerbating their problem. And 80% of them are asking for a raise from their employers. So the environment is quite dire for the consumer and impacting the overall inflationary environment. On the SME front, the, Europe, the European Union put out their SME relief package, not surprising. We put out our, our payment report at the SME level six months ago. And we knew that back then that more than two thirds of companies across all of Europe being asked to, to accept extended payment terms. So they're not collecting their revenue on time. And we estimate that the average company spends about 70 to 80 days a year trying to collect now much higher than it was even a few years ago. And the aggregate drag on the European economy is well over 270 billion. So the environment at the SME level and the consumer level is quite, quite, quite challenging. What that means is that our services, when we work with SMEs to collect on, on past due invoices, or we work with consumers to collect on their past due claims, it's more important than it ever has been. And when we do that, we not only help the two of them deal with a difficulty, but we also collect on behalf of our clients. So we have never been more important to customers or clients. And then ultimately, as we fall back on uh, the benefit that we give society, that number also is improving or increasing. In the last 12 months, we have helped around 5 million. That's the highest number we've seen for a while. We've helped 18 million people since 2020 pay off their debt and reintegrate into financial society. The trailing 12 month number is 5 million. That number is accelerating, which means two things. The underlying amount of consumers, number of consumers that are ch facing challenges is increasing, but also our ability to help them and our benefit to them and to society is also increasing. So when I fall back on that, it's a very difficult environment, but our services are absolutely critical and we're making a real financial as well as societal impact. So obviously we have a position to fulfill for all our stakeholders, but looking at the trust and, and confidence in the market, we need to regain that. What's your view on, on our position today and going forward? So I was incredibly proud of how the team and the strategy and the company was, um, was presented at the Capital Markets Day. I believe we have the right strategy, which is very different than it was even 12 or 18 months ago due to the environment and also my coming in as a CEO and trying to redirect the organization to where I think it should go. So I think we have the right strategy. Over the near term, we're going to have to make some very difficult decisions. Cost cutting, reducing leverage, scaling back our investing business. Those are necessary. They're absolutely necessary for our near term profitability and to create the foundation for long term profitability. Uh, ultimately, um, I am short term concerned that we need to execute on these things, which we're already executing, as you can see the beginnings in the third quarter numbers. Long term, I'm very positive. Great. I think that's a good note to end this conversation. Thank you, Andres. Thank you, Anna.